He's back. Who are you? My name is Bond. James Bond. Welcome to hell, Blue Fellas. Couple of men. He's not alone. Well, that's quite a nice little nothing you're almost wearing. I approve. I don't dress for the hired help. Good evening, 007. YouTubers and social media lands, welcome to an all new review. So this is my next James Bond review, the sixth film in the series of Eon James Bond films, so we're going to get right into that. But before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on these other videos, or this video in particular. As always people, let's get right into this. <laughs> to an all-new movie review. So like I was saying before, we're going to be doing the sixth James Bond film in my James Bond review-a-thon here uh, with a classic from 1971. That's right, 1971. And this is also the last outing of this particular actor as James Bond 2 as well, which I find, you know, I was really surprised he only did so many. But anyways, it's all good. It's all good. He still did a great job in his six times out. Yeah. But anyways, so going into this, this film from 1971, I was actually wasn't too sure how it was going to be because the previous ones that this actor has done, you know, they've been decent and they got better and better as they went along, but I wasn't too sure how this one was compared, especially because it's almost uh, 10 years since the very first one that he did. So I was really kind of, you know, skeptical a little bit about this film, but it ended up proving me wrong at all in the all in the all in the aftermath and all this kind of good jazz, you know, it, it actually did really well, which I was really surprised by. But the film I'm talking about, like I said, the sixth film in the James Bond Eon series is Diamonds Are Forever. Ooh, Diamonds Are Forever. Ooh. So Diamonds Are Forever is the 1971 sixth James Bond film. Uh, this was a really well done film, and I was really impressed by it. I really enjoyed it. I love that this was the first time we get to see James Bond, um, you know, primarily in the U.S., and I thought that was a really cool concept, too, as well, especially during this time frame. It was right after we went to the moon, so a lot of moon references were in this film, so that was really fun, too. So this one happens to be directed none other by Mr. Guy Hamilton. Oh, yeah, Guy Hamilton. Woo! So Guy Hamilton, of course, we all know he directed a few of the other James Bond films and has directed a slew of other films over the years. You know, he was he was pretty much directing up until he passed away. Now, a couple films that he's directed that I thought were pretty decent films were some great films that he did, you know, later on in his career. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is a Robert Shaw film and also starring a young Harrison Ford. And then, of course, the film called Force 10 of Navarron. Oh yeah, Force 10, ooh, this is such a great warp movie, and Guy Hamilton just directed it beautifully. He gave us some really great action sequences, he gave us great cinematography, and it just had a really well done screenplay too as well, that really allowed, you know, Guy to really bring to life this, you know, this film. And also just the acting was so superb in it, and Guy directed them very well to give us a really well-rounded war film that just, you know, really showed the spirit and also was pretty accurate to how it was during that time frame too for when the war was supposed to be taking place. So I was really impressed with his direction of this film and made it really fantastic. So the second film that Guy Hamilton directed that was a really amazing film is a thriller film that's based on an Agatha Christie novel that is called The Cracked Mirror. Oh yeah, The Cracked Mirror. Ooh. So once again, like I said, this is based on an Agatha Christie novel. It also was turned into a movie, as you can see. Uh, kind of like this, you know, like Death on the Nile, Evil Under the Sun, uh, you know, Murder on the Order Express, that type of deal. Another one with a really all-star cast that was really amazingly done. I really enjoyed the scenery in this film. I thought that the extent 
Uh, the cinematography was amazing this film. They took us some really great locales in it. Also, Guy Hamilton just did a really good job of directing the film and giving us this really good thriller type of film. It really showed that he has a great directing chops to do all kinds of different genres. You know, from doing a you know an action flick, spy flick, to going to doing like a murder mystery type of film, I thought that he had a really good sense of where to go with it, especially with his actions. You know, because the action sequences in these films are always so well done. Like he was like a almost like a stunt man almost that he knew exactly what to do to make it very uh, exciting and experience wise and just bring a really good sense to the action sequences. But with you know the cracked mirror, I love that you know he there was some action to it, but he focused a lot on the story and you know just making sure that the actors really brought to life these characters from the book. And he did a really great job at that. Really well done film. If you haven't seen The Crack Mirror, give it a try, people, especially if you like, you know, Murder on the Oak Express or Death on the Isle or Even on the Sun, The Man in the Gray Flannel Suit, anything like that. Definitely give this world it's worth the watch. Now, it comes to directing this Bond film, once again, Guy blew me out of the water. He gave me a great film with lots of great cinematography, great locales, great action, great screenplay, great directing of the actors and actresses that were involved in the film, and he just brought this all together and gave us this really action action-packed great James Bond film. Uh, hands down, this one's probably one of my favorites too as well that he's directed uh, so far. He just did a really fantastic job of giving us just a really well-experienced film too and very entertaining. And that's, you know, to me, that's what films are. They're supposed to be about entertainment, not about critiquing, you know, that, you know, every little thing like, oh God, they didn't do this right and they didn't do this right. Like, who cares? It's entertaining movie. And that's what Guy did. He really brought that to life, and I really enjoyed it. If you haven't seen uh, this James Bond film, Diamond Forever, it's amazing. Check it out for Guy Hamilton's direction. He was phenomenal. So this film has a great all-star cast that actually brings back a few different people from a couple other James Bond films as well. Now, of course, to start us off is Mr. 007 himself, Mr. Sean Connery. Oh, yeah. Woo, Sean Connery. James. James Bond. Oh, yeah. Great, great Sean Connery. He's so amazing. He's done so many great films over the years. Really amazing. Just a really profound and uh, just a really great actor he was. And he always brought great class to his characters. He always brought great action. And he just really always became his characters. And I always enjoyed him in anything he did. You know, from doing The Rock to Entrapment to Finding Forrester. You know, everything he did, he was always really on point. Now, a couple of films this time around that I really enjoyed of his that are decent films, I feel, and are not ones that you always hear about. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is one that stars Donald Sutherland and Leslie Ann Downs. And that, of course, is a film called The Great Train Robbery. Oh, yeah, The Great Train Robbery. Ooh, Great Train Robbery. Such a great film. Uh, this film is kind of like loosely based on the 1913 version of that film. It's kind of more of an updated version. Uh, but basically, you know, Sean Connery plays the main character who is this master criminal, basically. And he and Donald Southern, you know, play in this giant train robbery that happens back in the, you know, mid-1800s. And it's just a really well-rounded, like, kind of action thriller type of flick. And it just was so fun. And, you know, Sean did a great job of just bringing to life this character. And almost felt a little bit, like, dick dastardly a little bit how his character went. And I really enjoyed that. And I just thought that he brought a great presence to the character and just gave us a really great film. If you haven't seen The Great Train Robbery, Give it a world, people. It's worth the watch. Now, that brings me to the second film that Sean was in that is another one that I don't think you hear a lot about that he was in. And that, of course, is a great 50s film called Marnie. Oh, yeah. Marnie. Ooh. Now, this is a uh, considered a huge Oscar-nominated type of film. Uh, this was, you know, considered a huge success. Uh, it was considered a cult classic, all that kind of good jazz. And it's just one of those films that has a really just decent ensemble cast that brought the film together. And Sean Connery, you know, plays one, the kind of main love interest of the main character named Marnie, who is played by Tippi Hedren. And they just worked so well together. And I thought Sean did a great job of accommodating Tippi and like bringing such a realistic, you know, love relationship between each other. And just Sean was really, you know, just 
amazing the film at bringing to life this character and giving us a really great kind of like comedy rom com slash kind of you know. Uh, film. Sean just adapted so well to it and gave us a really well done film. If you haven't seen Marty, give it a whirl. Sean was amazing in the film. Now, once again, it comes to his last outing as James Bond for the Eon Pictures. He was really superb in this one. I enjoyed him the most out of all his James Bond outings in this one. I thought he was really awesome in it. I thought his action sequences were really well done. I thought he kicked butt, and I just thought that he worked the best in this film. He just he actually felt like James Bond to me finally in this film, and he just had that great suaveness. Like he really had perfected what he wanted his James Bond to be, and I thought he did a really exceptional, great job. If you haven't seen uh, this outing, Diamonds of Forever, with Sean, definitely check out his performance. He was on top and top notch. So that brings me to the second actor, actress I'm going to talk about in this film, and that is none other than the James Bond lead actress herself, Miss Jill St. John! Oh yeah! Jill St. John! Woo! So Jill St. John was a huge sex symbol back in the 60s. Uh, through the 70s, I mean, pretty much through most of her career, and even today, she looks still pretty damn good. I was really, really surprised. I was like, I was when I was researching about her, and I was like, wow, she actually still looks pretty damn good for being 80. I was like, wow. But anyways, Jill St. John plays the Bond girl in this film, and she actually was pretty fun in this. I liked her. I thought she was a decent uh, Bond girl that gave some extra flavor and gave us some really good acting. I thought. Uh, a couple of films that she's been in, mostly like rom-com comedy type of films that she's been in. I haven't actually seen any of them, but these two films, I have seen the trailers, I have heard about them, and I have read about them. So the first one is a Dean Martin film that, from the trailer, looked really hilarious and fun. And that, of course, is Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed? Oh yeah, Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed? Ooh. This movie looks super hilarious and fun. I love Dean Martin. And Jill St. John plays kind of one of the main characters in the film from what the trailer and what I read about it. And she's, you know, kind of like the sex symbol in the film. And from my understanding and from, you know, reviews and stuff like that, she did a really decent job in the film and that she was a, you know, really good, you know, extra or, you know, co-lead with Dean Martin and the other actor that was in the film. And just they all worked really well together and gave really superb performances. Uh, definitely something I'll have to check out in the future here and see what it's all about. But it looks like a really fun film. And also this is considered a, a classic film that was considered a hit. So I would definitely give this, you know, a try, especially if you're a Dean Martin fan or a Jill St. John fan. And if you like comedies from that era, definitely check it out, people. It looks like a fun film. So that brings me to the second film Jill St. John was in. And that, of course, is a film that is called Honeymoon Hotel. Oh, yeah. Honeymoon Hotel. Ooh. So Honeymoon Hotel, once again, is another kind of like rom-com comedy type of film uh, with an ensemble of actors and actresses involved. And it's another one that, after watching the trailer and reading reviews about it and stuff like that, it's another one of those ones that they just said Jill St. John did an amazing job of excelling the film. She just did a really fun job. She was a great addition to the film and just did a really fantastic job of bringing to life the character she played. And it just is a really interesting film, too, as well. From what I've seen in the trailer, it just looks like a fun film, too, as well like the previous film I was talking So it looks like a fun film. Looks like it's interesting and decent. Uh, definitely something I'll have to check out too eventually in the future. Uh, so if you're a Jill St. John fan, definitely check out this film. It's worth the watch and it looks like it's a fun time. Now it comes to, like I said, with her performance in Diamonds Are Forever. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. I thought she did hands down really great job. I thought she was one of the better Bond girls. And I just loved the presence she gave the character. It, she was very on point. She was very... Uh, sophisticated, and I love that she really brought a great, you know, essence to the character, and she wasn't super campy. She was a little more serious than other Bond girls, so that kind of made it a little funner, too, as well. And I just really enjoyed that she really played on her sex symbolism and really brought to life that character and gave us this really amazing Bond girl. Definitely worth the watch if you're a J Jill St. John fan. Definitely check out Diamonds Forever. It's worth the watch. So that brings me to the last actor I'm going to be talking about in this film. And that is none other than the main villain himself, Mr. Charles Gray. Oh yeah, Charles Gray. Woo! Charles Gray. So Charles Gray actually was in a previous Bond film as actually kind of a hero character or a 
uh, associate of James Bond in one of the previous films, which is interesting to see he was back as a different character and as a villain this time. So that was kind of interesting and, and enjoyable too as well because this guy really showed he had some pretty decent acting chops. Now Charles Gray also has been a prolific actor. He did a ton of films over the years, you know, up until he passed away in the early 2000s. And he just was a really amazing actor and I really enjoyed him as a villain in this film. Now, a couple of films he's been in that are really fantastic films. Now, the first one we talk about is a Richard Harris-led film called Cromwell. Oh, yeah, Cromwell. Oh, my gosh. When I was shown this film by a, 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 a ex-roommate of mine, this movie is phenomenal. It's such a great time period piece uh, with great acting, great sets, great cinematography, great locations. This is just a really well-rounded film that's based on a true person. And... Charles Gray was so awesome opposite of Richard Harrison's film, and they just worked so well together. And I totally have forgotten that that was him in the film, because it's been a while since I saw Cromwell. But he did an amazing job as the character, and just really uh, gave us this really great you know, impression and impersonation of who this person would have been. And it just was spot on perfect to the real person. Really fantastic film. If you haven't seen Cromwell, give it a whirl, people. It is an instant classic and amazing film. So this brings me to the second film that Charles Gray was in. Now, this film is a 1975 musical film that just was really amazing, really fun, and just actually had its 45th anniversary edition Blu-ray come out uh, this past year, actually, since now it's 2021. But this film is just a really fun film, and Charles Gray plays this one titular character in the film, uh, in passing through the middle of the film, basically, and he just was so freaking funny and awesome in that role, and just a really great addition to this film. And that film happens to be called The Rocky Horror Picture Show! Oh yeah! Bring it, bring it! Rocky Horror Picture Show! Oh my god, this is such a great film. Tim Curry, Susan Sarandon, uh, such a great cast of people. Uh, just a great musical film, and like I said, Charles Gray's character was so on point fun in this film. And even though it wasn't a huge role, it still was a very pivotal role to make the storyline very fun and awesome. And just all together, he just his performance was like so fun and hilarious to watch. I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really great late later uh, performance in his career uh, that I don't think a lot of people recognize or realize that that's him in the film. So. I'm giving kudos to him for this role. I thought he was really good and really fun and a great film. If you haven't seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, you haven't lived yet. Definitely check it out, people. It's worth the watch. But like I was saying before, Charles Gray was so awesome in Diamonds Are Forever. I really enjoyed him as the villain. thought he was on point. Uh, I thought that he gave a really great performance and really made you want to hate his character because he was just such a great villain. And also, I just thought that he worked really well with everyone and gave us a different type of James Bond film versus the other previous ones we've seen. It wasn't that same note, and he gave us a little, you know, a little bit more, uh, I feel, like, dedication to the role and gave us this really sophisticated villain, too, that was a lot more sophisticated and more about becoming the number one villain, basically. And I just thought that he did a really good job. Really enjoyed it. Really fantastic. If you haven't seen Diamonds Forever for Charles Gray performance, damn it, you got people. He's an amazing villain. So what is Diamonds Are Forever about? Basically, the storyline at this time is James Bond has to basically save the world once again from evil Spectra, who is being led by Charles Gray's character. And this time around, he ends up in Vegas and is dealing with Vegas types of deals and stuff like that. And basically just trying to save the world from once again from like basically like a nuclear attack. Uh, basically just, you know, to save the world. It, it's same basic general James Bond type of deal. Uh, it's just a really fun film. Really enjoyed it. I loved the action sequences. I loved everyone involved in this film. It was just was a really well-rounded James Bond film. Guy Hamilton directed the crap out of this film and gave us just a really great spy thriller action flick. If you haven't seen Diamonds of Forever, give it a roll, people. I give this one a giant tangle and movie box is up. This is definitely in my top five of the James Bond so far. It's a really fun film. Really enjoyed it and give it a roll, people. So that's it for this movie, you guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. And also, thank you for subscribing. And if it's your first time here or you have been here before, don't forget to check out any older or newer videos you might not have seen mine yet. And also, also go ahead and check out my merch store, people. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah? 
check out my merch store down in T Public. The link's down below where you can get cool merchandise. So if you want to show a guy some class and you know show a little pride for maybe a YouTuber you might like, you know, you might want to check it out. Shirts, you know, cell phone cases, cups, bugs, masks, all those kind of cool stuff you can find down there. And also, if you're interested in seeing some more cool stuff, definitely check out my Patreon page down below too, people, where you can see cool bloopers, what my next in videos are going to be, and all that kind of cool jazz. So definitely check that out too, people. As always, catch you in the next one.